In today's video, I want to show you an amazing mountain bike trail, one with some brilliant downhill. This week, I'm in Hopton Woods on the border of Wales. This is an awesome and highly underrated trail centre. Today, I'm joined by three riders that you've seen on the channel before, Gaz and Beck from Adventure Trails and fearless off-piece rider Jim. And we're here to explore some trails. In terms of routes, there are a couple of options here, with the main trail being the big red one. There are also some black downhill sections that we want to explore too. To start, we had a little warm up on the short blue section for 15 minutes, and then we dropped straight into the main event. This red trail gets going straight from the car park, and the first section starts with a bang. This fast and interesting section is certainly enough to wake you up after a long car journey. The others have ridden here before, but this was my first time. Although I didn't have any idea what to expect, the others did the majority of the leading, so I could happily follow behind. It was also good that they were able to give me a heads up on some of the trail sections too, but I could tell that I was going to need my A game to keep up with them. As you can see, this is an entirely natural trail. It's a well maintained line with plenty of roots and tree stumps to keep you on your toes. We're really lucky today that the sun is shining and the trails are dry. This has the makings of a cracking day's ride. One of the best parts about this section, and in fact the entire trail, is how well it uses the terrain. You're constantly weaving around and looking for the best line to take. The trails are constantly zigzagging through the undulating landscape, resulting in maximum fun for riding. Having an interesting section at the beginning of a trail really helps to get you fired up and excited. And this first section did just that. And I'm happy to report that there are plenty more awesome descents to come. Because these trails aren't paved and there's no cafe or anything here, this trail centre has got a great natural vibe to it. You definitely feel like you're out in nature. This really appeals to me because I love being in the outdoors. Don't get me wrong, bike parks and trail centres are a lot of fun, but it's trails like this that really get exciting. Especially with all the tree stumps, there are plenty of optional lines and small kickers if you're feeling in the mood. This section started off a bit slow with a few small uphills, but it quickly got steep. I'm really glad that I've recently serviced my brakes because they're going to be used quite a bit on today's ride. One thing that really surprises me about these trails is how quiet they are. For the quality of the trails, the car park was almost empty. Seeing how fun these trails are, the fact that this place isn't busy is baffling to me. As we neared the bottom of the first ascent, it was fair to say that I'm impressed with the trails so far. I can't wait to see what we find next. The descents at Hopton aren't just about going as fast as possible. Some sections have more interesting or technical elements to them. But to be honest, you never know what's coming next. As you can see, I'm riding my full suspension bike today, but so far all the trails have been really nice and flowy. I was starting to think that my long traveling Dura bike wasn't the best choice for today, but luckily for me, the smooth flowing descents didn't last forever. The next section is where things really get interesting. It's fast and rowdy, and lower down, it's all about the technical routes. The advice that Jim and Gary gave me before dropping in was watch out for your line choice, because it's easy to get yourself modeled up on this section. Because of the tree felling, alternate lines and jumps have started appearing all over the place, so it can be tough to spot the main line at times. This section also reminded me that it's important to find your own line when riding mysterious trails like this. When you're following someone, especially down a trail that you don't know, it's all too easy to follow their line exactly. But this means that you're not properly focusing on your line yourself, and when they make a mistake, so do you. But this trail is great fun. This is a brilliant section of trail, and with the alternate obstacles and small kickers, you can really open up the variations and make the trail as hard or interesting as you see fit. Yeah. After the section with all these line choices, came one of the most rapid and interesting descents. This one has a bit of everything, starting with speed. Getting into the woods, it was actually pretty dark, but the trail is easy to see, so you can really let loose. There are a couple of rogue tree stumps in here, some of which have been made into kickers and some which haven't, so pick your stumps carefully. This was my favourite section of the trail and it's really easy to see why. It's also easy to get carried away on sections like this, so it's important to stay focused. Once the trees open out, the trail gets a bit more technical as the roots span the width of the trail. There are several line choices available here, but unfortunately I picked one that forced me onto this awkward left line. Luckily, I managed to navigate my way back onto the main line without too much bother. At this point, the trail continues down over a couple of small tabletops, but we decided to pull over and take a bit of a shortcut. Our plan is to make our way along the next couple of sections and then up to the start of the downhill trails. 
Combining the blue trail, the red, and having a quick play on the downhill trails, this ride wasn't far off 20 kilometers, so it's a decent length. This time I actually remembered to turn on Strava so I could map the ride, something I normally forget to do. So if you want to see the route we took, go and check it out there. The nature of the train here is definitely a nice challenge. It has some punchy climbs, some amazing downhills, and a range of features from flow to routes to a couple of jumps. And I can tell you, once you get back to the car, you definitely know your legs have worked. Finally making it to the top of the hill, we took a look at the downhill sections. There are a few trails to choose from up here, containing everything from more technical routey sections to hoofing grey road gaps, so pick wisely. We had no idea what these trails had in store, so we picked one at random and decided to just take it easy on our first run down. This trail makes its way across the top of the recently felled area of the forest. These trails were much looser and definitely more rough and ready than the red trail. This particular one was a bit slower and more of a technical option. Because we wanted to keep riding the red trail, we only explored the top sections of the downhill trails. You can ride these all the way to the bottom of the hill, but if you do, you have one heck of a climb back up to rejoin the red trail. The start of the second downhill trail takes a line straight across the middle of the felled section. Like some other parts of the trail, you can find plenty of small kickers off tree stumps if you know where to look. But to be honest, just trying to pick a line through some of the rootiest sections of trail was taking up most of my brain power. This is a brilliant section. I love the more technical level of the trails and it's a shame we didn't get a chance to ride them all the way to the bottom. If you have an e-bike or you're just way fitter than us, you could have a great afternoon exploring these downhill sections and then using the mega climb to get back up. Of course, with all these amazing descents and downhills, Hopton Woods has its fair share of uphills too. I haven't shown too many of these, but the Red Loop has a number of long but manageable climbs. Deciding to do a couple of laps on the downhill trails, we eventually found ourselves pushing up a steep section. Although tough in places, the climbs are definitely worth it for the downhill. Back on the Red Trail, we headed into some more descents. Coming into the last couple of descent sections, the trail finishes as strongly as it started. These are flowing and interesting sections of trail and finish off the red loop perfectly. As I mentioned, I'm riding my full suspension bike today. Gary and Jim are also on their full suspension bikes. Beck on the other hand has brought her hardtail, so you can ride Hopton on either type of bike. As you can imagine, the hardtail was a little slower and rougher on some of the more rooty and technical sections, but you shouldn't be put off from coming here if you're a devout hardtail rider. In fact, the flowing descents and corners on sections like this would be amazing on a hardtail, so I'll leave that decision up to you. All I know is that you need to be agile in the corners and have your head on a swivel because these trails cut a really fun line no matter which direction they go. So with the last section done, we headed back to the car park to congratulate ourselves on a successful day's ride. If you're looking to do a great red loop with a couple of black downhill sections, I would highly recommend going to Hopton. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video and leave a comment if you like. I'll see you next time.